In this video, we'll continue our investigation of Native American sites in the Chicago region. This time we'll be exploring the area four to five miles downriver of the Native American sites we last saw in Glen Ellen, in a community once referred to as Bonaparte, which today falls within the districts of Downers Grove, Lyle, and unincorporated areas of DuPage County, Illinois. Here within the Hidden Lake DuPage County Forest Preserve, the Morton Arboretum, and the residential neighborhoods surrounding them, along the valleys and riverbanks of the east branch of the DuPage River, are sprinkled multiple Native American habitation sites, chipping stations, and burial grounds, from the historic to the prehistoric. Please join us in this investigation. A primary guide for this investigation will be the Albert Scharf maps, published in the early 1900s by the Chicago Historical Society, and available for inspection at the Chicago History Museum archives. Scharf's maps and field notes, which describe hundreds of sites in the Chicago region, are known by today's archaeologists to be flawed in their original interpretation. But they nonetheless provide a fairly reliable guide to Chicagoland's Native American sites, both historic and prehistoric, compiled via personal inspection by Scharf in the late 1800s, or by stories that Scharf collected from local residents that he met during his explorations. In addition to Scharf's materials, we will also make use of period newspapers, maps, census records, vital records, local histories, and DuPage County Forest Preserve and Morton Arboretum websites. Like the Glen Ellen area to the north, the Bonaparte region consists of a set of gravel ridges, oriented roughly north-south, the result of glacial moraines, which bulldozed these gravel ridges into position more than 10,000 years ago. The east branch of the DuPage River meanders through a gap between these moraine ridges, creating another bend in the river where marshes and fens emerge. To the east of the river, a prominent glacial ridge can be seen along Butterfield Road, or Illinois Route 56, between Illinois Route 53 and Interstate 355, much of this ridge lying within the Hidden Lake Forest Preserve of DuPage County. A few miles south and to the west of the river, another set of ridges cut by stream valleys lies within the west properties of the Morton Arboretum. Bonaparte was a small settlement, which once stood promisingly near the intersection of Butterfield Road and Illinois Route 53, earlier referred to as Joliet Road. The post office of Bonaparte was established to the west of this intersection in the mid-1840s, undoubtedly as an homage to the French leader, Napoleon Bonaparte, but was put out of service by 1860. Nonetheless, an unincorporated rural community persisted here for decades following, with the Bonaparte School, located at the northwest corner of Butterfield Road and Illinois Route 53, until the 1950s. By the time that Albert Scharf had done most of his field work, mapping the Chicago region in the late 1800s, the Bonaparte community had lingered long enough to note on his map, before it was eventually swallowed up by Glen Ellen to the north and Downers Grove and Lyle to the south. In 1900, Albert Scharf had published his first map of the Chicago region's Indian trails and villages. This larger map of the region was intended to be a rough guide, with dozens of accompanying detailed maps and field notes to provide more precise locations of the sites described in the general map. Scharf's large map denotes multiple Native American sites in the Bonaparte area. To the east of the east branch of the DuPage River, along the aforementioned glacial ridge, Scharf denotes both a habitation site and a signaling station. To the west of the river, and a little further south, within the small valleys carved into the western ridge, Scharf indicates a major settlement site, along with chipping stations and even a mound site. Scharf also notes at least a few Native American trails running through the region. We briefly discussed one of these trails in our previous video, descending south from the Native American settlement sites in Glen Ellen, along the west bank of the east branch of the DuPage River, 
where it splits in two, one trail heading southwest towards the west branch of the DuPage River, where another major Native American settlement site was found near Naperville, and the second trail heading due south, eventually connecting with the Native American settlements along the Des Plaines River, in or near Lamont and Palos Springs. Scharf also produced a detailed map of the Bonaparte area, detail map number 47. This map did not include the eastern portion of the area described in the larger map, but does provide more information regarding the areas to the south and west, chiefly lying within what is today the Morton Arboretum, as well as a few of the residential neighborhoods to the north and west of the Arboretum. Within this map, Scharf indicates a settlement and shipping station in the northwest quarter of Section 35 of Milton Township, a habitation site in the northeast quarter of Section 4 of Lyle Township, and a Native American burial mound site near a gravel pit within the southwest quarter of Section 34 of Milton Township, DuPage County, Illinois. We'll begin with the sites to the east of the DuPage River, along the North Ridge transected by Butterfield Road, Illinois Route 56, which are found on Scharf's larger map. We're fortunate that many of these Native American sites have remained open and accessible to us in the present day, mostly by happenstance rather than by design. The Hidden Lake Forest Preserve of DuPage County, Illinois, can be found on the southeast corner of the intersection of Butterfield Road and Illinois Route 53, and is bounded by Morton Arboretum property to the south and the Wood Creek Business District to the east. The Forest Preserve is bisected by the east branch of the DuPage River, with two small lakes adjoining the river, Round Meadow Lake to the north and Eagle Lake to the south. Limestone trails allow visitors to take in the views around both of these lakes. The entrance for the Forest Preserve is along Illinois Route 53, less than a quarter mile south of Butterfield Road. This land, comprising about 400 acres, along with a mansion and outbuildings, was purchased for almost $10 million, about $32 million by today's money, by the DuPage County Forest Preserve District in 1977 and 1978, purchased from the family of William R. Johnson, an alleged gambling house operator. Johnson, in turn, had purchased it for $150,000 in cash, less than $2 million in today's money, in 1933 from Arthur Cutton, a wealthy grain commodity speculator. Cutton had built the mansion and estate, dubbed Sunny Acre Farm, in 1912, but was forced to sell after losing much of his wealth from the stock market crash of 1929. The U.S. government had Cutton over a barrel for a tax evasion, and thus the man who had previously made a large fortune via shrewd speculative trading was forced to make a series of bad deals just before his death in 1936. Cutton's mansion and the farm outbuildings were torn down in 1986, the estate grounds being restored to a much more natural habitat by the DuPage County Forest Preserve District. Which brings us back to Albert Scharf, who apparently visited the location in the late 1800s, prior to the modern elevation to a state. Here he reports that the site, in particular the high ground to the east of the river and marshes, contained the refuse of an Indian camp. He also denotes a signal station along this ridge, near the habitation site. As we discussed at length in our previous video, archaeologists would view Scharf's signal station denotation as being highly doubtful as there is little to no evidence that either historic or prehistoric tribes in the region made use of smoke signaling. And if they did, it's unlikely that they would have designated special locations for such signaling. If Scharf indeed found evidence of human occupation at these sites, then their best interpretation would be of an encampment rather than as a signal station. As we have no detailed description of or access to the artifacts that Scharf might have seen, the site remains difficult to date. Some recent historians place a Potawatomi settlement here in the early 1800s, although there are no contemporary records which support this designation. As such, it is more likely that it was the site of occupations prior to historic times. Today, there are no forest preserve trails that can take you up along the glacial ridge that overlooks the valley to the west 
although presumably it can be reached overland from the east side of the DuPage River. The location would have been ideal for its visibility of the surrounding area and for its proximity to the river and marshes below, which provided fresh water, food, and a means of navigation north and south. The slopes descending from this ridge are slowly returning to something resembling their former visage, from the time of the Native Americans. One artifact that does remain, however, is from more modern times, that being the formidable former gate that greeted visitors to Arthur Cutton's Sunny Acre Farm and Mansion. Hiding within the woods that line Butterfield Road, you can still see these stone sentinels guarding the site. Note that there is no access to the Hidden Lake grounds via this blocked entrance, nor is parking allowed by the gate, so take care when entering or leaving this driveway via a very busy Butterfield Road. Just two miles to the west, southwest, across the DuPage River Valley, along the west bluffs and high grounds that line the east branch of the DuPage River. Yet another large estate of a wealthy magnet was to unintentionally protect and preserve Native American sites within this ancient river valley. The Morton Arboretum, consisting of several hundred acres of open and natural space, is nestled between Glenellan to the north, Wheaton to the northwest, Lyle to the south, and Downers Grove to the east. Joy Morton, a wealthy industrialist and one of the sons of Sterling Morton, founder of the Morton Salt brand, acquired the property in 1909, building a family manor house there that he named Thornhill. The Thornhill Mansion, which was demolished in the early 1940s, stood at the present location of the Thornhill Education Center, on high ground to the west of the DuPage River and Illinois Route 53. Joy Morton formally created the Morton Arboretum from this estate in 1922, with a focus on the study of trees and shrubs, supporting living collections of plants from around the world, cultivated across his vast acreage. Morton, who also had a keen interest in Native Americans and archaeology, hosted visits from Albert Scharf to his Thornhill estate in the 1910 to 1920 time frame. Indeed, Scharf devoted most of the Bonaparte notes and narrative to the sites within the Joy Morton estate, later the Morton Arboretum. For example, to the south of Morton's Thornhill Manor, Scharf noted significant vestiges of Native American habitation all along the slopes of a gully formed by Willowbrook Creek, a west-ranging tributary of the DuPage River. Scharf writes, On the extensive farm of Mr. Joy Morton, on the Joliet Road between Glen Ellyn and Lyle and formerly known as Parsons Grove, various evidences of early Indian occupation have been found. The old Indian trail from Maywood to Nepperville crossed this farm and is still plainly in evidence in several places and for a distance of several hundred feet on the lawn in front of Mr. Morton's fine country residence. From this point, it formerly extended over the lands to the south of the house into a very pretty creek bottom, the hillside sloping down to which are still covered with fine stand of oak and other deciduous trees. The creek, which winds its course through the little valley, is fed by two fine springs. In this creek bottom and on the hills which slope to meet it, were once located the Vic farms of an Indian village. This is shown in the cultivated fields on the south side of the creek and wherever there has been a disturbance of the soil on its northern bank. Here, although no very careful or extended search has been made, flint arrow and spear points, perforators and knives, fragments of pottery vessels, flint packing hammers, flint chips, flakes, blanks and rejects, animal bones, and burn stones from aboriginal hearths have been recently collected. Further search will doubtless add to this list other articles of Indian manufacture or use. A small cabinet of implements found here has already been made by Mr. Morton. 
Sheltered by the hillsides once clothed with giant trees and with an unfailing supply of pure water at hand, it is doubtful whether a more charming site for the location of an Indian village could be found. You can still follow this creek bed from where it empties into the DuPage River, about 1,000 feet west of the underpass to the west side of the Arboretum. As you head west into less manicured areas of the Arboretum, you feel that you are walking back in time, treading the Arboretum's woodchip paths underfoot, first by Lake Marmo and then by Sterling Pond, both of which were likely to have been marshlands before the Mortons redesigned the landscape in the early 1900s. The brook and valley continued westward from Sterling Pond into an upland prairie setting. Here again, we can see why this would have been an attractive habitation place for indigenous people, as it was a protected glen with spring-fed fresh water, with the hunting of game, fowl, and fish along the creek, the river, and adjoining marshes. Scharf then goes further west along this occupation area, describing what was likely to be an associated burial ground or mound, but a short distance from the creek. At the head of the little valley is a gravel pit from the hillside near which six or seven Indian skeletons were unearthed and digging past test pits for gravel. Doubtless other dead still repose in this Indian cemetery. All of the graves were shadow and not protected by boulders or timber. So far as could be learned, nothing was found with any of these interments. Since the early 1900s, Scharf's mound site location has been lost to archaeologists. Scharf's detailed map of Bonaparte, published in 1911, several years after the general map, indicates that this grave or mound location, with the associated gravel pit, was to the north of Sterling Pond and to the northwest of what is now Lake Marmo. The gravel test pits were likely dug into one of the gravel-laden glacial deposits that form the high grounds to the north of the Willowbrook Creek bed. However, if we translate Scharf's map and mound onto a modern map, we see an immediate problem with his placement of the burial place. Topographical maps show that Scharf's mound would have been situated in a gully or ravine, which had been carved into the ridge by drainage into Willowbrook Creek. We can see this same drainage gully on the 1908 topographical survey map. From its profile, this gully was there long before the U.S. settlers came into the area. Therefore, this is not a likely place for a burial mound or a human burial. Archaeologists point out that Scharf's maps can be fairly inaccurate when translated to a modern map sometimes being hundreds or even thousands of feet off the mark. And so, the best one can hope for from these maps is an approximate location, within several hundred feet of the actual position. If we examine a LIDAR map of the general area around Scharf's location, a few intriguing features jump out. Keeping in mind that Scharf's location was only approximate and that the mound site was somewhere near the head of the creek valley, we can see one feature that bears a striking resemblance to Scharf's diagram of a fish or bullet-shaped quarry 
being about the right shape, the right size, and oriented in the same direction. This landform is also on higher ground, and on a hillside, close by the head of the valley, just as Scharf described. It should be noted, too, that this location is more than 1,000 feet west-southwest of Scharf's original designation. On the ground, we can get a better sense of the topography of the possible Scharfman location, which lies just south of the P-24 parking area, located in the west side of the Morton Arboretum. And the site doesn't disappoint. It's located on a hillside, tapering down towards the creek valley below. However, the middle of the hillside appears somewhat concave, as if dug out, while the remains of spoil heaps, discrete mounds of dirt and debris, circumnavigate much of the slope for several hundred feet, tapering towards Sterling Pond to the east. This headland is covered with mature trees, meaning that it has seen little disturbance for many decades. It is clear, however, that this hillside has seen significant earth movement in the past century or more, which may very well have been gravel quarrying. Our sense is that this location is a very good candidate for Scharf's lost mound site, set within a gravel quarry from more than 100 years ago. We have conferred with the Illinois Archaeological Survey regarding this location, and they too believe that it is a good match for Scharf's Bonaparte Mound, based on Scharf's map and description. However, they cannot officially record the site without an archaeological evaluation to confirm Scharf's observations. Such a step is ultimately up to the Morton Arboretum to pursue. There are other intriguing landforms in the vicinity of Scharf's Mound. For example, there is what appears to be a linear mound aligned perpendicular to the main route roadway, which circumnavigates the west side of the Morton Arboretum, in an area referred to by the Arboretum as Pine Hill. Is this landform human-made? And is it modern or ancient? Aerial photographs suggest that this section of the Arboretum has seen few topographical changes, at least in the past 80 years or so. And so it's possible that this Willowbrook Valley holds even more secrets than we know. Before departing the Morton Arboretum, Scharf does note that some signs of Native American habitation were also unearthed on the east side of the Morton's estate, succinctly remarking that, in Mr. Morton's fields on the east side of the Joliet Road, evidences of the location of a former Indian camp have also been found. As to the fate of the artifacts said by Scharf to have been collected by Joy Morton from his property, or the several human remains removed from the mound site near Willowbrook Creek prior to the 1910 time frame, it is uncertain. Without these artifacts and remains, it is difficult to date the habitation sites along the Willowbrook Valley. However, a reference from the Morton Arboretum Library suggests that local residents remembered a significant Potawatomi village at this location at the time when Potawatomi were being relocated to western states in the late 1820s to mid-1830s. But even so, due to its favorable setting, it is also likely that this location was occupied numerous times in the past few thousand years. There are at least two more habitation sites in the Bonaparte area denoted by Scharf, both of which fall outside of the Hidden Lake Forest Preserve and the Morton Arboretum. One of these is marked as being within the northeast quarter of Section 4 of Lyle Township, in the vicinity of Least Lane, about a quarter of a mile north of Warrenville Road. This is right on the southwestern edge of the Morton Arboretum, on the east side of Leask Lane, with residential areas extending to the west, near the cross street of Alma Lane. Scharf makes no specific mention of this site in his notes, and it's likely part of a larger habitation site he describes in the west portion of the Morton Arboretum, along Willowbrook Creek. The site lies just to the south of the creek, along high grounds gently sloping to the creek bed below, which would have been a ready source of fresh water for any indigenous peoples encamped here. Again, this is an approximate location, as Scharf's maps do not provide sufficient precision for a more accurate placement. 
Scharf notes another large settlement site, as well as a chipping station, in the middle of the northwest quarter of Section 35 of Milton Township, to the west of the east branch of the DuPage River. Today, this is an unincorporated section of Glen Ellen, DuPage County, Illinois, roughly in the area of Shagbark Lane and Juniper Lane, less than a half mile west from the present course of the DuPage River. However, it should be noted that the DuPage Riverbed was straightened and deepened in the early part of the 20th century, and so it is likely that the village site would have been a few hundred feet closer to the water's edge hundreds of years ago. Here, along the west bank of the river, the valley extends as a broad plain southwest to northeast, where a chipping station was said to have been found. A chipping station is a place where stone flakes or debitage from the manufacture of stone tools can be found. The land then rises quickly to the west and northwest, where the village site was said to be located, putting the village site in the lee of the ridge, providing protection against prevailing western winds. In the 1970s, the area was developed as a large subdivision, with curving streets and suburban tract homes replacing farm fields that were tilled for generations after the departure of the Native Americans. Looking back across all of these sites, it is surprising that since Scharf's time in the early 1900s, there have been few archaeological studies related to the valley that extends along this section of the east branch of the DuPage River between Butterfield Road and Warrenville Road in DuPage County, Illinois. Scharf's observations from more than 100 years ago, before this land was heavily developed, strongly indicate that temporary habitations of indigenous peoples were common here in both historic and prehistoric times. Yet we know very little about these encampments, the people that lived here, and the times that they were here. We hope that in the years to come, archaeologists are given the opportunity to more thoroughly examine this ancient corridor in order to tell the rich history of the people who lived in this valley for thousands of years. We hope that you enjoyed this video and that you've garnered some fresh insights and information from our journey. Our goal was to highlight how the lives of the indigenous peoples, the Native Americans, their ancient pathways and their village sites are still deeply embedded within the landscapes that are present and accessible to us to this day. Thank you for watching, and if you are so inclined, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. And we'll see you, in a manner of speaking, in our next video adventure.